What's going on everybody? It's Richard Koberger here, the Blue Collar Nerd, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over the brand new Service Titan inventory app. This app allows inventory users to receive purchase orders, pull pick tickets, and perform inventory counts all from a mobile device. Plus it supports barcode scanning, which has been a hugely requested feature. Now, before I jump into the app, something important to know is that you need to be using full inventory in order to use this app. So at least as of the time of me recording this video, if you're only using the purchasing module and not full inventory, then this app will be of no use to you. But even if that's you and you're not using the full inventory app, if you're interested in inventory at all, I would still watch this video because this just might be the thing that pushes you over the edge. However, do keep in mind that setting up inventory from zero is a pretty major project. So if you're not ready for a pretty major project right now, then you might wanna hold off. But if you're already using inventory, you don't need to worry about any of that. You're good to go, you're ready to use the app. So access to the inventory app is controlled by a permission. So make sure that any users that you want to have access to the inventory mobile app have the permission access inventory mobile app enabled. This permission is available for both office employees and technicians, but do keep in mind the inventory app is mainly intended to be used by a warehouse person. So technicians are not the main audience of this app, although they can access it and we'll get into why you might wanna do that a little bit later. Okay, so once we've got our permissions all set, the first thing we need to do is download the Service Titan inventory app from your respective app store. It's available for both iOS and Android. This is what you're looking for, it looks like this. Once you've got that downloaded, you're gonna log in using the same credentials that you always use to log into Service Titan. And once you're signed in, you'll be presented with something that looks a little like this. So you see, we start off on this homepage here, kind of a dashboard that shows you some basic data about the purchase orders, transfers, and inventory counts that are relevant to you today. So we can dig into any of these either by tapping on the tile right here from the home screen, or you can also navigate to the different sections from the bar there at the bottom, the navigation bar. So if I tapped on purchase orders, that would take me into the receive tab. If I tapped on transfers, that would take me into the pick list tab. And if I tapped on inventory counts, that would take me into the counts tab. Now you see here at the top, it tells me I'm currently looking at default truck electrician one. So what I need to do here is tap this filter icon here in the upper right hand corner and pick the inventory location that is relevant to me. So for this example, that's gonna be just default warehouse here. Okay, so let's start off by showing off the purchase order receiving workflow. So I'm gonna tap into purchase orders here. You see I've got two POs here, one I've already started receiving and one I have not marked as arrived yet. So the purchase orders that are going to show up here are the purchase orders for this particular inventory location that are either sent or part partially received. So let's say this PO, PO number 145 here, the second one on my list, let's say that just showed up. So I'm gonna say mark as arrived. And then the first thing that happens is it asks me for a picture of the packing slip. So I can either pull up my camera to take a picture of it right here, or I can hit gallery if I took a picture of it already and I can just pull it out of my photo library. So for this example, let's say I've got my packing slip right here. I'm just gonna hit camera to pull up my camera. There's you, looking good. And here is my packing slip. All right, use photo and next. All right, then it's gonna ask me for a vendor document number. We'll call that 214, submit. Okay, and then it tells me, great, that's now marked as arrived and ask me what would I like to do next? Would I like to return to the POs or would I like to start receiving this PO? So let's go ahead and start receiving. And then I get a list of all of the items that were on this PO that I need to count and reconcile. And this is where the barcode scanning comes into play. So let's say this was a big purchase order. It's not in my actual example, but let's say it was a big order. We've got like multiple pallets of stuff here. Well, as I'm coming across stuff, I wanna count it and I don't wanna scroll through this long list to try and find the thing that I'm looking at. So instead what I can do is just scan the barcode. So the button to pull up the barcode scanner is in the upper right hand corner there. Now, as you may have guessed, I am not actually in a warehouse right now. I'm in my home studio. So this is a bottle of fish oil supplements, but let's pretend that it's actually some half inch aluminum conduit. I would hit this barcode scanner button right here and then I would scan it in and boom, that pulls it up half inch aluminum conduit. And then I would simply input however many I have. Let's say I got 25 of that. Great, and now that moves over to the counted tab over here. Okay, now that worked because I already had that barcode scanned in as that particular material. But when you first get started with the inventory app, of course, everything's not gonna be mapped to the right barcode already. So you have two options for getting that done. So if you happen to have or are able to get from your vendor a big spreadsheet of all of the barcode numbers, then you can import those in bulk from the office side. To do that, you would go to settings and then inventory and barcode scanning. Then you would go over to this export tab and hit export barcodes. And that's gonna give you just a template for you to input all of your barcodes into so that you can then re-import it. And the template just looks a little something like this, pretty simple. Okay, that's option number one. Now option number two is to just enter things in as you go. So, uh, uh, this here is a large pack of tissues, but let's say that actually it was this XP-16 heat pump. 
but I haven't entered this barcode in yet. So I would hit scan to scan the barcode. I would scan it in and then it's gonna tell me that the code is not found. Let me just set this down real quick. Uh, okay, code not found. So I need to say add barcode and then I can tie this barcode to a material either on my purchase order or from my price book. Now by default, it already searches for the barcode number just in case that correlates with any of your codes or anything that you are already using. But if not, no problem. So I'm gonna come over here to price book. I'm gonna close out of that uh, pre-populated search. And what was that, the XP16? Okay, there it is. There's the heat pump and then we're gonna hit add barcode here. Okay, great. So now that barcode is tied to that heat pump condenser piece of equipment. So now that pulls up. And then let's say I got one of those. And you'll notice that little red tag shows up that says serialization incomplete. So this is a serialized piece of inventory. So I'm gonna hit confirm here and then it's going to ask me for the serial number. And again, I can input that by scanning a barcode or I can manually input it if for some reason that's my only choice. Uh, barcode, barcode. Uh, okay, this is an unopened holiday gift from Service Titan from two years ago, but let's say for this example that it's my heat pump and here is the barcode with the serial number. So again, I just hit that barcode icon and I scan that and then boom, my serial number is put in for me. And can we just take a moment? I mean, people have been asking for barcode scanning for so long. Like, I, I, normally I only do this in the release notes videos, but we gotta bust out the y'all hat for this. Howdy, y'all. All right, anyways, now that that's put in, I'm gonna say finish and receive item, and then that item is marked as received. Now, by the way, just something I wanna call out, uh, you might notice that nowhere on this counting screen does it say how many items we're expecting. It doesn't tell you how many were on the PO. That is very much on purpose. That is to force the person who is supposed to be counting this inventory to actually count it. Versus if it showed you like, okay, we're expecting 50 of this item, somebody who was in the mood to do some pencil whipping could just type in 50 without actually doing any counting, which would defeat the entire purpose. Now it is planned at some point to offer the option to show how many of the item we're expecting. It would be something that an admin could turn on if they wanted to, but that's not something that was in the scope of this initial launch. All right, only two more things for my example here. So let's say I got 24 of that, and let's say that I got 26 of that. I'll hit confirm on both of those. Okay, and then I'm automatically moved over to the counted tab because everything is counted now. By the way, if I needed to make any changes at any point, I can come over to the counted tab and hit the little kebab menu next to any item and I can edit the quantity or I can return it to uncounted. Also, if for some reason my vendor has sent me something that isn't on my list, I didn't order it, I still need to track that I've received that. So from the kebab menu here in the upper right hand corner next to the barcode scanner, uh, there you have that option to add an item that is not on the list. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and hit done and it highlights any issues that I have. So you see here for one of these items, I am missing some quantity. And for one of those items, I actually had extra quantity. So I know from my purchase order, I actually ordered 25 of both of those things, but I input 24 and 26. So that is why these issues are here and being highlighted. So I hit finish for now, that's gonna sync to the office side and then we can deal with those two issues. So you'll see now because we had those two issues, uh, the PO is still here. So let's hit continue receiving on it and let's say that my vendor sent me that one of that item that I was missing, let's say confirm. Great, and now I am 100% received, so we're good. I mean, I still have that extra item, but we would just return that. So now I am ready to hit submit and then the PO is moved over into the received status. And if I hit return to POs, that PO is no longer showing because it does not need to be received anymore. Cool, so that's the PO receiving workflow. Now let's talk about transfers. So transfers are initiated from the office side. That's where I'm taking some inventory, let's say my warehouse inventory, and I want to transfer it to, let's say somebody's truck. So I see here that I have one transfer that is due today. Uh, transfers are gonna be due the day that they are created. So let's tap into that. You see that there's actually two pick lists that I could choose from, but only one of them is due today. So let's start picking this uh, default truck HVAC tech one pick list. So I'll hit start picking here and then I get the list of items that I need to pick. So as I'm going around, I can mark things as picked. I can also hit this kebab menu here on the right hand side of any item to edit the quantity or add additional serial numbers. And of course, barcode scanning is supported here as well. So pretty straightforward. We just mark these items as picked as we're picking them. Assuming we had everything that we needed to pick, we're gonna get this, we're gonna have no issues. But let's return an item to unpicked here. And I see that I needed two of those, but maybe we didn't have two of those. So let's say I only picked one. I'll hit pick and then hit done. And then we get this issue highlighted where we were missing one piece of this material. And it tells us here that the office will be notified of that issue. All right, so let's hit submit here and return to pick lists. Okay, and then finally we have inventory counts. 
So as I'm recording this video, inventory counts is actually still in beta. So depending on when you're watching this video, when you tap on inventory counts, you might just get a message telling you that you need to join the beta in order to use that feature. So inventory counts are also initiated from the office. They're found here on the inventory screen under the manage section, we have inventory counts. And you'll see we have some pending counts here. We have an in progress tab, a review tab, completed and canceled. And there are a few different types of inventory counts that you can create. So we'll hit create new here just to show you what I mean. So this is a video about the inventory app, not about explaining all of inventory. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what every single one of these means, but counts are something that you just want to do on occasion when you have inventory, you count up the inventory just to reconcile it. You know, numbers just drift over time due to acclimation of human error. And so you wanna get that all back into place. So we can create a cycle count. That's for like counting inventory like on individual trucks. So maybe something you would want to do like if, if you're an HVAC company at the beginning of the season, okay, we're, we're shifting over from the heating season into the cooling season. Let's do an inventory count, make sure we've got enough, you know, cooling related stuff on our vans. Then we have item count. That's best for verifying the quantity of just a single item, but across multiple inventory locations. We have full inventory count. That's something you might wanna do like once a year just to correct that drift. And then we have beginning inventory count for when you're just starting with inventory and you need to input all of your starting levels. So let's just tap into that. You see I have a bunch of open examples here. So let's just tap into one here. Let's say start counting. And then we see a pretty familiar site where we have a list of all of our uncounted inventory items that we need to count. They will move over into the counted tab and then you will submit any issues will be highlighted. And again, of course, barcode scanning is supported. Now this, the inventory counts, that's where you might want to give a technician access to the inventory app because that way you can allow them to do a count of their own truck. Now, something I do want to highlight about the pick list workflow. Currently you can pick the pick list from the inventory mobile app, but let's say we're picking some materials for a technician or an installer to use on a job. Marking all of that picked material as received is currently, as I make this video, still something that has to be done from the office side. And that's because we want that receiving functionality to actually be built into the field mobile app that technicians use so they don't have to shuffle between multiple apps. But because as I make this video, the field mobile app is actually being rebuilt from the ground up, that feature is something that's gonna have to wait until the new version of the app comes out. And doing inventory counts for technicians, that's also something that we want to put into the field mobile app at some point. Again, so they don't have to shuffle between multiple apps. But until that point, since it was easy enough to do, technicians can just have access to the inventory app so that they can do their own counts. Okay, and the last thing I'll highlight is this more section here at the bottom of the navigation menu. Here I can add barcodes to the price book. So if I wanted to just do that in the warehouse in bulk as I go, just go around the warehouse scanning things in, I can do that from here. We also have this vendor information section where I have all of my vendors listed. And I can even hit this phone icon to give them a call. So if I'm staring at my incorrect order and I wanna call them some mean names, it's really convenient to do that. Uh, those are really the main things here. We've got a little about, a little help section, referring somebody else to Service Titan and signing out of the app. And that is the inventory mobile app. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Hey, I'll put some relevant resource links down in the description box down below. Please hit like if you liked this video and found it valuable. Please subscribe to Service Titan's YouTube channel if you haven't done that already and hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime we upload a new video. Please remember that your engagement through likes, comments, and subscriber numbers are the ways in which my success is measured. Appreciate it. Peace.